this video. We're going to be doing section 5.3 in this video. So we're going to be doing trigonometric graphs. Um, and so here we're going to start with the sine graph and then we're going to go to cosine. So for this one, just go ahead and cross this off. I know that's still on your notes. I thought about fixing it, but I didn't want you to have to reprint the notes. So I'll fix it for the next video. So hopefully when we do this next time, that would already be gone. All right, so here we're just going to put in the values of sine and we're going to learn how to graph the trigonometric function. We're going to do sine and cosine. And we're going to do, um, we're going to be moving things around. Okay, so we're going to be doing translations and all the other stuff. So here, let's just input these values. And so let me just zoom on in. And so here we have 0, a half, square uh, root 3 over 2. Notice I did not put in the fourths. So we're just using the thirds here. Um, so I won't have square root 2 over 2. It will have 1, square root 3 over 2, a half, 0, again for sine and then minus a half, minus square root three, two, one, minus, oops, square root one, square root three, and that should be a two, sorry about that, um, because that's straight, oops, wrong one, wrong one, this should be a two, because that's straight down on the graph, right here, and then we have square root three, over 2 minus a half and 0. All right, so here if we're going to graph that, we're going to start here at 0. Here I'm going to put in pi, and I also know that is 0. And then I'm going to extend this out just a little bit longer for me. I'll put in 2 pi, and once again we know that is 0. All right, we're going to put in pi over 2, and th so pi over 2, and then 3 pi over 2, and that's going to occur at 1 and minus 1, respectively. And then here we'll have our, our pi over 6, and then pi over 3, and then, and then we have this at 1. And so we can kind of see here, we get a graph that looks basically like this. And so this is the sine graph. Notice here, if we have the unit circle here, here at 0, Sine gives us the y, the y value, all right? So sine of theta gives us our y value, okay? So here we have zero, here we have a half, here we have three halves, or three square root three over two, here we have one, here we have square root three over two, a half, zero, negative half, and onward and upwards. And so these, so this line here matches, let me go ahead and do some colors. This line here matches this line here. This line here matches this line here. This pink line here matches this pink line here, and so forth. And so this is how that graph gets formed. All right, now we're just going to draw it for a little bit longer period. Let me just extend this out. All right, we're going to extend it out this way, and here we'll have a pi, right? Here we have zero. Here we'll have, oh, this is minus pi, sorry, pi. Here we'll have 2 pi, here we'll have 3 pi, and here we'll have 4 pi. Alright, and so notice here, I didn't mention it, but I'll mention it now. The graph of sine has a period of, of pi over 2, because basically, once I get back here, I'm back to rewriting these ones again. And so here, we're going to draw what we had before, so this will be minus 1 and 1, and draw that in. And notice that if I go back around the circle, I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm going to come up, come through, come down, and then here backwards, onward, and upward. And so it just goes over and over again. And so here we call this our period. Um, and basically that's the length of the graph, which will repeat itself over and over again, because this 2 pi period is also the same here. And so the difference between here and here is indistinguishable. And so that's another 2 pi, and it can go backward and forward. Okay. All right, so let's do the very same thing for cosine. All right, so let's just run through the cosine. Let me talk about a couple, oops. Let me 
zoom on in. Let's talk about a couple of properties. All right, so the sine function and the cosine function are, so if I add two, if I add two pi to the period, I get back the same function. If I add two pi to the, or add two pi to my time, or my terminal angle, or whatever you want to call it, um, to my angle here, I'm going to get back the same function. And so cosine also has a, a period of two pi. And here we can plug in the same values here, or different values, but the same concept. 3 over 2, a half. Notice here, once again, I didn't put in the halves just because I didn't have enough room. Uh, 0, minus a half, square root 3, minus square root 3 over 2, 1. Oh, negative, 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 sorry. Square root 3 over 2, a half. Once again, that should be a 2. Sorry about that. That would be a 0. And then we have a half. Square root 3 over 2 and 1. And so here, once again, cosine cosine of the angle measures the x distance. And so here, I'll have 1. And so that match. So I'll start here at 1. Oops. Here, I'll have a half, and so this would be, or I'll have 3 pi over 2, so this is 3 pi over 2. Here with the teal, this would be a half. And then I'll just go ahead and, and so this measures this distance here. And then this is 0, and so here at pi over 2. Hold on. It's thinking. Sorry about that. At pi over 2, it's going to be 0. Then here we'll have it again at pi, we'll have it at 3 pi over 2, and then we'll have it at pi, and then we can just kind of graph the rest of this in. Comes down. Here at pi, it's negative 1, comes back up to 0, and then comes back to 1. And so this is the first period. Oh, this will be at minus 1. And we can do the same thing here, as if, because notice here at 3 pi over 2, I get a negative half, and then by 5 over 6, I get a negative 3 fourths, and then here at pi, I'll have a negative 1. So this is just measuring the x angle, so we get this one. Now with that, we can graph for a long period of time, so let's go ahead and do this again. So we'll start here at have a pi, we'll have 2 pi, we'll have 3 pi, we'll have 4 pi, We'll have 0, and then we'll have minus pi. And we'll start from 1 to minus 1. And so here it comes up. I'm putting in the half marks. So I'm not going to mark them. So come up, go through 0, hit 1, come up, go through. Oops. Hit 1. Go back through the half mark. Here, that's one period. Once again, that's two pi distance, and then we just repeat the whole process again. Go back through, stop at one, come back up, and here, and then. So we can graph this as long as we want, right? Just keep cycling over and over and over again. That's why it's called a periodic function. All right, I'll leave that up for a second as you guys write it, finish writing that down. So, now what are we going to do? We're going to start moving it around. All right, so we're going to sketch the graph. Um, let me zoom on in. So we're going to sketch this graph. So here, notice if I add 2 to it, I'm just shifting everything up by 2. Okay, um, let me go ahead and choose a fun new color. Now I have some other colors to work with. Let's work with a really dark green, because that should show up as well. All right. All right, so I'm going to draw in green y equals cosine of x. Okay, I'm going to put a pi here and put two pi here. I'm going to have my little half marks, and then I'm just going to draw this in between one and negative one. This is one and negative one. I'm just going to just draw that in. All right, so that's it. Now for this one, I'm going to be doing in blue. So I'll do this in blue. And so here, I'm going to start at, I'm going to be two higher, so I'm going to start here at three. And then I'm going to put a little dotted line just for my own sake here at two. 
and then it's just going to be two higher than all this. And so it's going to come in, go down, come up, hit one, head up, and go up like this. And so here I've drawn this function. It just gets raised two higher. All right, so let's draw a cosine again in green. So I have that as a reference. And so here we're going to start at one. Let's just put in our pi, put in our two pi. We'll mark our um, pi over two and three pi over two. We won't actually label them though. Make this one, make, the, uh, oops. make this one, and make this negative one. I'm going to come in, go down, come back up in here. So that's green. And then we'll draw this one in blue. And so remember that negative reflects across the x-axis. So we're just going to put a reflection in here, comes up, and comes down. And so that's how you graph that. So here we can just perform our normal translations or transformations, I guess. Translation. This is a translation. This is a transformation, particularly a reflection. Now we're going to talk about amplitude. If I multiply an A up here, it's just going to stretch it or shrink it um, by the the absolute value of that. So the amp and the amplitude is the highest is the is how much it differs from it's half of the total the amplitude technically is half this total distance here or how much it if I don't translate it up or down because the amplitude of this function is still one right even though it's half of the total distance it travels and here this is still one right even though it's half the total distance it travels the amplitude is the measure of how much it goes from the baseline okay so absolute value of this will tell that because if a was negative we just flip it and then we still have the amplitude so it's actually two transformations in one and I'll show that here in a second okay so let's talk about this so let's go ahead and put in let me just draw y equals cosine of x just put this in so and I want to, and, I, and I'm happy that you guys are drawing this a couple times that way you really get ingrained in your head which how to do this Put in the half marks and here since we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with amplitude i'm going to put in lots of tick marks for me and each tick mark here will just be one value okay all right so i'm going to draw this in so it comes in goes through zero comes down comes back up and do this and so we're just we're, we are squishing it a little bit here in blue we're going to draw this in blue there we go. So here we're going to start at 2. We're still going to go through 0 at the same spot. We're going to come down to 2. We're going to still go through 0 at the same spot and go back up. And so we just, here we just stretch the grass horizontally. And I love how I'm making an internet video and I'm still doing hand signals in front of a screen. <laughs> yeah, it's good still to be alive, I suppose. All right, once again, we'll draw in the, the standard one. So we have the standard here, and so minus 3, so we're not only going to start at 3, but we're actually going to start on the opposite of 3. So we're going to start here at minus 3 here. We're going to go through still the same spot. We're going to go up to positive 3, and come down, and come back down to here. And so notice here that the amplitude, um, which I almost always just, just write amp, is equal to 2, and the amplitude here is equal to 3. Okay, even though we've done this translation, it's the absolute values. The amplitude there is 3. All right, give me a second to write that in. All right, so go ahead and flip pages and go ahead and zoom on in. All right, so now. Um, hold on, I didn't put myself on mute. <laughs> there we go. So now we're going to talk about um, the period, right? So we're going to have, so we're going to slowly build this up to be more and more complicated. Here we have a sine of k, kx, or a cosine of kx, and so this k will help us determine the uh, the the period, right? And the period is 2 pi minus divided by that k. So if the k is 1, the period is 2 pi. 
But if it's anything else, we'll get new periods, and we'll show that. All right, so let's go in for here. So here I have a 2, right? So my period for this, my period will be 2 pi divided by k, when k here is 2, so it'll be 2 pi divided by 2, which equals pi. That means my whole graph is going to run through in one pi length, OK? And so let's go ahead and do that. And so here, it goes all the way through in one pi. We're going to write what half of that is, pi over 2. And then we're going to put little tick marks um, between that. So we just tick and tick. So we have little tick marks here. Of course, this is pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. But we don't, as long as you have the, two, the middles, I'm usually pretty happy. All right, so the amplitude here is 3. So 1, 2, 3 is where we're starting. We're starting at sign, so I'm starting at 0. Here at the half tick mark, I hit my 1. At pi over 2, I go back down to 0. I go back to, to 1, 2, minus 3. Come here, and then head on up. Oh, and then head on. Oops. Let me be very clean about this. Here, so this is at negative 3 right here. And then I come back to here. So this is one, so I've sketched one period of this function. Let's look at this function. Here, I have uh, my k here is equal to a half. So my period, my period is going to be 2 pi divided by a half. Well, that, of course, is 4 pi. So here, I'm just going to mark on my little graph 4, four pi. And mark half of that, which is 2 pi. Put little tick marks, which will be, of course, 1 pi and 3 pi, respectively. Here, my amplitude is 1. Um, I might as well write that down. Amplitude is 3 for this one. Here, my amplitude for this one is 1. And notice here, I flipped my graph, right? So the negative sign means I flipped it. And so here, I'm going to start here at 0. I'm going to go down to 1, come up, go back through here, and then up to 1, and then back down to 0. And so here, I've sketched this. And in fact, since I have room, since we have all this room here, let's do one more example. Let's let y equal to a half of sine of 4 pi. Let's just do one more example. Here, I'll give it a big nice thing. We'll have a tick mark and a tick mark, and we'll say that's 1. We'll have a tick mark and a tick mark, and say that's minus 1. Because here, my amplitude for this is a half. And so I'm only going to go up and down a half. My period, my period is pi over 2 divided by k. k here is 4. And so here I have pi over 2. Oh, I said 2 pi over 4. Gives me a period of pi over 2. And so pi over 2 is as far as I need to go. So I write pi over 2. Here I'm going to put in half of that, which is pi over 4. And I'm going to put tick marks to represent pi over 8 and 3 pi over 8. You don't have to always mark them. So here we're going to be starting at sine. Notice it's positive, so we're going to go up to a half, down, and through to a half, and then back up to 0. Okay. And so this is how you can do the period will either stretch it or shrink it. I always write what's one period, take half of that, and then take the other two halves, and those are the marks I usually mark for my zeros and my ones. And that's, um, or my, my zeros and my amplitudes, right? My amplitude, right? This is an amplitude, so it would be zero, amplitude, zero, negative amplitude, zero for this one. Same thing for up here. It would be, these are all sines. We'll do cosines in a second, right? So this would be zero, amplitude, um, which would be 0, and since this is negative, so it would be negative amplitude 0, positive amplitude 0 for the values. And here we just use this, okay? So I just how I map it out in my brain. All right, so take a second to write that down. Um, and then we'll go ahead and do... And then we have our very last page. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost. I think I have my last page. Yep, I wrote, put my last page on there twice. 
<laughs> All right, that's fine. It doesn't matter. So let's go for this. So the next thing we're going to do is our base shift of B. So here we're going to have a minus k, which is our uh, will help us determine our period. X minus b will give us our phase shift. And please notice that this x is clean. This x has nothing on it. So if you have a two or three on there, you'll have to pull out the k in order to find your phase shift. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do four examples here. We'll do four examples here, and then after we're done with these four examples. Um, that's the end of this notes. All right. So here we're going to have a phase shift of pi over three. So here we're just taking normal sign, right? Here the amplitude. Oh, let, me, let me make it so you can see everything. So the amplitude here is one, right? I have a one up front. My k value here is one, so that means my period. Is pi over two. And here, my b value, I'm shifted to b, and so I'm going to be shifted, since this is negative, I'm going to shift to the right. So b is, oh, come on, b is equal to pi over 3. That means I'm going to, I'm going to move everything to the right by, move to the, I'm not writing everything I'm saying, right by pi over 3. And so how do we deal with this? How do we deal with this? All right, so my first point is going to be here, because I just want you to sketch one period. So I might as well sketch an easy period for it. So I'm going to put pi over 3. So that's where I'm starting. My period is 2 pi. So I'm going to go 2 pi further than that. So 2 pi plus pi over 3 is equal to, uh, this will be 6 pi over 3, so 7 pi over 3. So that's my ending point. It'll be 7 pi over 3. What's in between these two would, of course, be 4 pi over 3. So half, if I take half the distance here, that'd be a pi, and so that's here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put tick marks for the other ones. Can you calculate what that is? Sure. You could actually run through and calculate what that is, but it's not necessary. Um, and so here, we're going to go ahead, our amplitude is 1, so let's just put in the marks for 1. This is sine, so we're going to start at 0. So we're going to start here at pi over 3, because that's how much we move to the right. We're going to go up to 1, down, down to minus 1, and up. And here we've drawn one graph. All right, let's do this again with sine of, sine of plus pi over 6. And so here we still have an amplitude of 1. Here we have a phase, uh, period of 2 pi because k here is uh, 1, right? We have a 1 right here. So this is still 2 pi. My b is equal to, notice it's negative here, so, so if it's positive in your actual function here, it's actually minus pi over 6, okay? So this means go to the left. It means I'm going to go to the left by pi over 6. So here I'm going to go I'm going to start at minus pi over 6. All right, so 2 pi. So here I'm going to take my period and add that to my thing. So minus pi over 6 it gives me 11 pi over 6. All right, so this is 11 pi over 6. So it's halfway in between that. Well, this is all 2 pi. So if I add a singular pi to this or take away a singular pi from this, I get the same answer, which is 5 pi over 6. All right, we'll just put in the half marks. You don't have to calculate it, but you should think it if you want to. This is sine, so we're going to start here. We're going to go from 1 to negative 1, so it's going to come up, hit 1 right here at this line, come down, 0, come up, and come back. All right, let's just do two more. These are fully complicated, so here we have full complication on both, right? And so let's go ahead and crunch through these. So here, I'm going to want my amplitude is 3, so I'm going to go ahead and mark that in. Here, my amplitude, I'll we'll just stay with 1. Here, so my amplitude here is 3. My period, so this is my k value. Notice that my x is clean and the k is already pulled out, so we're good to go. So I'm going to have 2 pi. Um, oh, let's make this easier for you and for me. Let's make this a 2. Let's make this easier for you and for me divided by 2. And so this gives me a period of pi. Okay, so here's my period. Let's make this slightly easier for us. All right, and then here, this is my phase shift. 
And so my b here is pi over 4. And since that is, since b is positive, we're going to go to the right. So the first thing, the first one we're going to have is pi over 4. How are we going to find? So my period here is pi. So I'm going to add pi, my period, to pi over 4. And I'm going to get my pi over 4. All right, so that's where I'm going to end is 5 pi over 4. Halfway in between that would be, of course, I'm going to add pi over 2 or minus pi over 2, so it gives me 3 pi over 2, or 3 pi over 4, sorry. Because pi over 2 would give me 2 pi over 2, so either way I get to this. That makes this here, halfway in between this. Well, this is, of course, just pi and or pi over 2, and then 4 to 4 to 4, so this would just be pi. So, so you can do that if you want. This isn't necessary, but I'll do that. Here we're starting at 3. We're going to start at positive, and sine starts at 0. We go to our amplitude, back to 0, down to a negative of our amplitude, and then back to 0. All right, let's do the very last one. The very last one here is y. So here, I have my amplitude of 0 0.7. And so here, an amplitude of 0 0.7. Here, notice that this isn't cleanly pulled out. Here, we don't have it cleanly pulled out like it is here, because there is something on this x. We do need to do. We do need to change this. So let's change this to be 2x, and then if we pull out a 2 here, this just becomes. So this is. Hold on. <laughs> let's just simplify this. This is a half. Pi, and so if I pull out another 2, this just becomes pi over 4. All right, so here we have our period. So our period is 2 pi divided by 2, which is our k value. So this gives us the value of pi. Our amplitude is 0 0.7. And then here we have um, our b. And so here we have plus, and so this is really minus pi over 4. And so here we're going to start at minus pi over 4. Um, here we're going to have, and then here we'll have minus pi, oops, we'll have our period. Our period here is pi, so we'll have pi minus pi over 4. And so that's going to give us 3 pi over 4. And so that's how far we're going, 3 pi over 4. This is pi over 4. Halfway in between these two would just be uh, add pi over 2. So that give us 2 pi over 4. We put in the halfway marks. We're going to just mark this as 0 0.7, and we're going to mark this as minus 0 0.7, just to make our lives easier. Notice this is cosine. So cosine starts at its amplitude. So we're going to start at our amplitude. We're going to go through 0. We're going to hit our negative amplitude right here. We're going to go back through 0, and then we're going to go back up to the amplitude. And so this is how you can draw draw any sort of these graphs. And then if you want to do another period, you just continue the process, add a pi, mark the things, and go from there. Well, that's the end of this set of videos. And um, yeah, see you on the next one.